on a stormy night like this, it's good to focus your attention inside. Outside is cold and windy. Inside you can make warm and still. And regard it as a type of freedom that you're able to focus inside without any outside distractions. Some people complain about concentration practice, that it's narrow and confining and restrictive. Your mind isn't free to wander around as it ordinarily likes. But there are many different kinds of freedom. There are the freedoms to do something, the freedoms to act as you like, and there's freedom from a lot of things. And here you've got two kinds of freedom. You're free to explore inside. You're free from outside disturbances that demand your attention right now. There's the noise of the wind, the noise of the rain. But that doesn't demand your attention. You're not responsible for it. So you're free to look inside and not have to worry about outside at all. Learn to appreciate this as a kind of freedom. After all, freedom is what the Buddhist teachings are all about. He said, just as the ocean has a single taste, the taste of salt, the Dharma and Vinaya have a single taste, which is the taste of release, the taste of freedom. The freedom to look inside, to have the time to straighten things out inside. Because there's a lot of work that needs to be done here. The whole point of the Four Noble Truths is that you suffer because of things coming from within. Events outside can have a huge impact on your senses. But the suffering in the mind, which is the really important suffering, comes from within the mind itself, its own activities. And most people are not free to turn in and look at their minds this way, to take the time that's needed. And so they go through life with a lot of important work getting left undone. How you talk to yourself, the images you use to represent the world to yourself, the images you use to represent your body, your mind to yourself. These things can create a lot of trouble if they're done in ignorance. While you're alive, they create trouble. As you die, they're going to create trouble. So this is work that needs to be done, sorting these things out. Looking at how you talk to yourself right now, talk to yourself about the breath. It's called direct thought and evaluation. Some people ask. When they're doing concentration practice, how do you do direct a thought and evaluation? Well, it's something you're doing already. The mind is constantly talking to itself, constantly passing judgment on things. What's good, what's not good, what's worthy of attention, what's not worthy of attention. What you should be doing right now, what you shouldn't be doing right now. The mind is full of this kind of chatter. And although eventually we want to bring it to stillness, first we have to make it skillful chatter. So we focus it on the breath. Get to know this force of life. As the body expands and contracts, the air comes in and goes out, and the movement of energy in the body flows through the body. Learn to notice that. And then you can talk to yourself about that flow. And talk to yourself about how the mind is settling down or not settling down. This is an important part of concentration practices, getting things adjusted so they fit together. So you're commenting on the breath. You're also commenting on your mind. Is this the kind of breathing that's good to settle down with? Does it keep you awake? Is the way you breathe putting you to sleep? If it's putting you to sleep, you've got to breathe in a different way. Think about the breath in a different way. And as you do this, noticing the images you hold in mind, you get more and more sensitive to what a huge role they play in your experience of your body and the world around you. 
I've met many people from Tibetan traditions that keep saying that, why should you focus on the breath as your theme of meditation? Because when death comes, it's going to abandon you, which is true. But as you focus on the breath, you're going to be learning a lot about the mind, how the mind fabricates its experiences around something really simple like this. You know, there's such a variety of ways that you can talk to yourself about the breath, image this breath to yourself. And it's that talking and the imaging, that's going to be really important when death comes, how you talk to yourself, what images you hold in mind, because things will have a huge impact on where you're going to go. So as we focus on the breath, we're sensitizing ourselves to the mind, learning about this area in here. It's like knowing you're going to be mugged on a certain street corner. Well, you go down to that street corner and you figure out, well, where are the escapes? Maybe if they come to mug you, but you know how to get out of that street corner. You know the hidden alleyways. You know the little places where you can go. You can slip past your muggers. In the meantime, you can also create a sense of well-being right here. Because if the mind is going to stay here in the present moment, it's got to have a sense of well-being. And you can do that with the breath. And you can do that with the way you talk to yourself about being here, which is why it's so important to have this sense that concentration is not restrictive, it's freedom. It's freedom from all the other disturbances outside, all your other responsibilities outside. If there's a part of the mind that says you're being irresponsible by concentrating, you say, well, no, I'm taking good care of my mind. Because this is the mind I'm going to be using when I do have to deal with things outside. So I'm putting it in good shape. But for the time being, you don't have to think about those outside responsibilities. Just think about the mind. It's what it needs in and of itself. I've mentioned that story many times about the woman who came to Wat Damasate. Her plan was to spend two weeks meditating there at the monastery. And after the second day, she came to say goodbye to John Fung. She was going to go home. And he asked her why. She said, well, I'm concerned about my family, my husband, my children. What are they going to do without me? He says, just tell yourself you've died. They're going to have to make do without you, and they'll be able to do it. So with that thought, she was able to stay for the full two weeks. So have that attitude as well. Any thoughts go out to the world, tell yourself, okay, what if I'm dead now? Or what if I were about to die right now? Would I want my thoughts to be wandering out there? You'd want them to be centered. You'd want them to be focused. Well, this is where you develop that skill. And you've got the time and the opportunity right now to focus on these things, to give them your full attention. Otherwise, the needs of the mind get met only partly, partially, because we're splitting our attention between what's going on inside with what's going outside. But now you can focus totally inside. It's not the case that your ears will go deaf, but you simply don't have to focus your mind out there to the sounds you hear. As I said, they don't demand your attention. So you're free to ignore them. So see this opportunity to meditate. Each time you meditate, you're free to explore inside. You're free to get to know your own mind. You're free to put down all your responsibilities outside. You're free from a lot of compulsions. There is still some compulsion, in the sense that once you get a state of concentration going, you have to maintain it. Remind yourself, you're free to do that now, free to develop that skill. As ultimately, it will take you to a point where you don't have to keep doing things in order to be happy. You find a happiness that doesn't require any maintenance at all. And John Munn calls it agiriya, freedom from activity. 
We usually think of freedom as freedom to do things as we like. But here we're free from the compulsion to have to do things, from having to like things, from having to want things. Because our basic desire, the desire for happiness, at that point will have been totally satisfied. So there are no compulsions there at all. That's where we're headed. In the meantime, one compulsion is that once you get in a state of concentration, you want to maintain it. But remember, you're free to maintain it right now. Nothing else is demanding your attention. There's nowhere you have to go, nothing you have to do. Just develop this sense of centered but broad awareness in the body. The whole body breathing in, the whole body breathing out. And you're free to maintain that. And if you can't maintain it, you're free to work on that, to learn how to maintain that. Nothing else is demanding your attention right now. 